Learn Persian with Chai in Conversation, Shab Share with Yara, and Baba Tahir. Okay, hello and welcome to another Shabbish Share with Yara. Yara, thank you for joining me again. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and today we are going to talk about um, another poet that uh, is might be a little bit less familiar to people, definitely to me, and that is Baba Tahir. So Yara, had you heard of Baba Tahir before? Another one? No, I have. I have not. I didn't hear about. I mean, I had. I had heard Rudaki's name definitely in Tehran and on street signs and whatever, but definitely not Baba Tahir. I had zero idea. Oh, amazing! Of, okay, yeah. so I I had heard of Baba Tahir a, lot, a little bit because my grandfather was very into him. Um, and in the book that that I mentioned before that uh, my grandfather wrote uh, for every member of the family, Baba Tahir comes in here a lot, and he would often talk about how. Baba Tahir just had very simple manual for life. Um, and he was from Hamidan. So if you go to Hamidan, he has a huge shrine there. Um, so just like Sadi does uh, in Shiraz and, and a lot of the poets have in different cities, um, he has a huge shrine there. So I think that that's... Have you been to Hamidan before? You know, funnily enough, yeah, <laughs> it, it was probably 20. I must have been like six or seven years old, but I uh -huh. do remember it. And one of the biggest attractions in that town, I mean, it's possible we went to the Baba Tahir Shrine. Right. But the one thing I remember from Hamadan is the Qara Ali Sad, which is the Ali Sad cave. It's right. an underground like cave and there's water and you take a boat and you're underground wow. in a boat. Cool. And you probably <laughs> yeah. go to like a coffee shop in the, in the <laughs> cave, right? <laughs> maybe today, maybe today they've done that. I that was twenty five years ago. I don't think that was. Yeah, I just remember the cave. I remember the person rowing the boat for us. We were just stuck in this cave. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it was fun. It was a fun time. <laughs> okay. Well, so the the little bit of uh, research that I've done about Baba Tire. So Baba wasn't actually his name. It's just oh. uh, it's just a uh, term of respect um, of meaning that he's a wise or an elder, yeah. um, the respected. Um, and he uh, was from the 11th century, and he's super mysterious. Like, they really do not know much about his life. <laughs> I'm like, so, so we're okay. We're okay. <laughs> but um, his poem, poems are also written in the Hamadani dialect. So you'll hear that um, in this poem that we're going to read right now. Uh, it has some of that, like, different dialect, right? And he also lived a very spiritual and stoic lifestyle. And he wasn't, so it's like the whole name, um, Baba Tahir Oriyan, um, mm -hmm. Oriyan means naked. So uh -huh. he kind of gave away the worldly possessions. He didn't have nice clothing or unlike Rudaki, actually, I didn't mention that um, in the last Shabbashir that we did. Rudaki was very prosperous. He had a lot of money. He lived in man er, castles and with the kings and stuff. And uh, Baba Tahir was the exact opposite. He was kind of an ascetic and um, oh, didn't have worldly Austere possessions. Lifestyle. Yes. Okay. And he was a stoic, which is very popular these days. I don't know if you mm -hmm. hear about stoicism all the time. but <laughs> I mean, I've met stoic people. And yeah. There have been. Yes. But definitely stoicism is a movement today. I guess. Ooh, oh, my gosh. Yes. I guess living in Austin, um, <laughs> we have this guy who has moved here recently, Ryan Holiday. A lot of guys have moved here recently, I'm sure you've heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, but... the ATX is the, I see yes. that written everywhere now. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah. So um, it's kind of, the, he's brought back the stoic movement. And actually, maybe we could talk about this a little bit um, because it might have to do with uh, Baba Tahir's life. Stoicism is always very popular in times that are a little bit um, tumultuous. Hmm. So like what we were going through right now, and basically, the philosophy is that you can't control what happens outside, but you can control how you react to what happens. So oh, I think that that's okay. that is a big theme in Persian poetry in general um, is, you know, there might be things happening around uh, that don't worry yourself with things. Just live in the present, live in the moment. Interesting. And you control. control. Oh, I like this idea. You can control <laughs> your reaction to something bad but yes. you cannot control the bad thing happening okay. exactly exactly hmm. so maybe uh he'll go out and pick up a book of epictetus after this <laughs> that's <laughs> that's one of the big stoic philosophers but um so is boba tahir and we're with boba tahir right now 
So like we did in the last uh, episode of Shabashe, um, Yara is going to read the poem with his beautiful Persian reading voice. <laughs> poetry really, reading really voice. kind. No. <laughs> oh gosh, some per- Iranian poet is going to be like, that guy's not any good. <laughs> <Yeah>. Always. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and then I'm going to read the uh, translation, which actually we don't have a translation, so I'm just going to uh, make it up on the spot. And then um, we're going to go through line by line and talk about the words. Uh, in this session, we're just going to talk about the meaning behind the poem. In the next podcast, I'm going to go over the individual words and phrases, how you can use them in your own conversational Persian speaking to elevate your Persianness and your uh, talking, your speaking in the Persian language. Because um, that's what these poems do. They they help us to learn new words, new concepts, and mm-hmm. how to talk to our fellow humans. So with uh, not much further ado, oh, I do want to say one other thing. I found a poem. Shakila is a uh, Iranian singer. Were you familiar with her before? Not really. I, again, okay. one of those things I'd heard. It's, oh, play Shakila. Maybe somebody yelled it across the room at a Mehmuni at yes. some occasion. But I'm not as familiar like as like Gugush and Haide and you know, some of the other ones. Right. Yeah. Well, she's from a lot later. So I was probably in my like uh, teens or something, maybe a little bit earlier, when in the United States, the Iranian TV started becoming really popular. And she was in that period of time. So probably like in the 90s. Like early nineties oh, or something. Oh, so more of a diaspora singer. To- oh, yeah, she oh, okay. definitely is. Yeah, she's from California, but she started singing classical music. So she was very different than these people that came at the same time, like Sippy Day or whatever. Like yeah. very poppy singers. So mm. I think that maybe she's like a little bit less known now, but uh, she has a version of this song that we'll link to on this podcast as well. Mm. So without further ado, go ahead. Okay. Hosha am show ke mehmoon shomaya. کبوتروار بر بوم شمایم ترشروی مکن مهمون عزیز خدا دونه که فردا شو کجایم Beautiful. So I'm going to try to translate this on the spot. So um, be glad tonight because I am your guest. Like a bird, I am sitting on your balcony. Don't... Uh, don't have a bad attitude bad attitude <laughs> um uh my dear guest or because a guest is dear mm, 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 mm. right um lord knows where i'll be tomorrow night mm-hmm, mm-hmm. perfect yeah mm-hmm. that's i had same read on this one as you yeah no okay. difference whatsoever <laughs> yeah yeah cool cool and so uh the first thing i want to mention is that the word shab is a very popular um, Persian word because it means mm. night. It's a very simple word. Um, and in this poem, we hear the word night a lot, but it doesn't sound like that. So mm. that's an example of that Hamadani accent. So instead of shab, what does he use? Oh, I didn't I didn't actually get that. It, oh, it's uh... sho. Sho is shab. Oh, interesting. So I'm sho. Oh. That is just a dialect thing. I thought I read that as fardar, fardasho, or like fardash oh. ra. Interesting, but no, that makes more sense because that's the Hamadani yeah. thing. Fardashab exactly. koj. Oh, it's unclear where I am tomorrow. Like em sho sho eshe. You know that popular uh, song? Oh yeah, em sho. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay. Kosha so em shab. Ah, oh, my ah, brain. So we ah. taught Yara something. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, there's many things I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so kosha em sho. So that means be glad tonight. Tonight. Or like it's a happy okay. night. Khush is the word for happy mm-hmm. or glad. So em sho ke mehmune shomayom. Mm. Mehmun is the word for guest. Mm-hmm. So I'm your guest. Um, and then kabutar var. So var is the word for mesle or like. Mm-hmm. So kabutar, what's the direct translation for kabutar? Is it pigeon? Pigeon, is, yeah. Is that it was, what it is? I pigeon? think so, yeah. I think pigeon. so, yeah, pigeon. But in Iran, like, pigeons aren't, like, gross. They're just, like, yeah. a kabutad. It's so sweet. It's it is a, nice a pigeon. Bird. Is yeah, it, a it pigeon? is a yeah. nice bird. Or is it a dove? No, I don't know. I get all the birds mixed up. Oh, my gosh. Hold on. Yeah, let's look this up. <laughs> yeah. Kabutad. Kabutad. Pigeon? Let's see. And while you're looking that up, I'll say boom is the word for, like, push de boom means your rooftop. So your balcony or your rooftop. 
Kabuter. Oh, I'm still in the Kabuter. Okay, so yes, I'm getting pigeon. Yes, yeah, pigeon, pigeon pictures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is like we don't have gross pigeons, and like here no. it's seen as a very like negative thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it is more like a dove or like a pretty bird. Yeah, it's Iran. totally like, yeah, <laughs> Kabutar, it's so pretty. But here, yeah, because like, pigeon is like very pest-like. Ah, pigeon, even the word yeah. pigeonhole and pigeonhole this into that. Anyways, yeah, whatever. Yeah, it's not. No, no, no. Yeah. So Kabutar var, so like a pigeon, I'm sitting on your balcony. So like a pleasant bird that comes by. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm your guest, just like that little bird would be your guest, which actually reminds me. Um, my yoga teacher would always say, uh, he also passed away a few years ago, but oh, he would sorry. always say, yeah, he would always say that, um, like you should never eat alone. Like when the company you eat with, uh, is just as important as the food that you're eating with, uh, mm. that you're eating. So you're not going to get nutrition if you're just eating by yourself. But he was like, if you do have to eat by yourself, like go outside and sit next to a pigeon and eat. Oh, I love that. That's, that's so cute. <laughs> yeah, you have the company. No, absolutely. Yeah. That's my favorite part of eating is having people. Honestly, the people are more important than the food. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So I miss that a lot about our class. We would always go and eat together afterwards oh. and just like have these big feast. A lot of fun. Um, anyhow. So Hosha M Sho Kimehmun Shomayom, Kabutarvar Ba Bum Shomayom. So again. Uh, what a good night that I am your guest. Um, and like a pigeon, I'm sitting on your balcony. Okay, do you want to do the next part? Mm -hmm. So, Tor Shrui Makon Mehmuna Aziz. So, that one basically, I mean, if we were to do a literal translation, don't be sour faced, oh dear guest. Um, but sour faced in this sense would be, you know, don't have a bad attitude, don't be, I don't know, don't be mean, I don't know, something like that. Oh dear guest. And then the next part, uh, so God knows, only God knows where I will be tomorrow night. So, I mean, my understanding of this was, all right, like, don't be, you know, don't, have, don't be salty. Don't have a bad attitude. Be salty. About... That's a good oh, way to actually... put it. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Because Torsh literally mm -hmm. means, uh, what is the, what's Sa the direct? Sour? Yeah, sour, I yeah, guess, sour. right? So like yeah. sour, salt, whatever. Every language is picking up a, a sense of flavor, like, I assume. Like she is pickled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So don't be pickled. Don't be salty. That's exactly Yeah, don't it. be salty about, <laughs> you know, don't be salty, oh dear guest. Like, who knows where I'll be? I might be dead tomorrow, you exactly. know? Like, I might be gone tomorrow. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Which so. is another like in the moment thing. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure, again, this is funny how much we can relate to this. Like a lot of times. I mean, right now we've been going through this period of time where uh, we haven't been able to see each other because of the coronavirus and blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But before that, you know, there's a lot of times when you're like, oh, I have so much to do. And this person is like at my house and uh, I just want to like yeah. get to what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then that's exactly what this person is saying. No, tonight, let's just be glad. Let's be happy with each other's company because mm -hmm. who knows what tomorrow will bring. Totally, totally. Who knows when the coronavirus will shut down the <laughs> world <laughs> yeah. and, and you cannot sit in someone's house for two years. <laughs> right. So, no, yeah, just appreciating people in the moment, right? Because, I mean, everything, nothing in life is really permanent. And exactly. whether it's a relative, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a friend who might move away from town, again, a relationship, yeah. a breakup that might happen, or totally. God forbid, a relative that might pass away. It's just like, Let's enjoy this time together. Don't have a bad attitude. Don't make faces at me. Let's just <laughs> let's just talk and enjoy each other, right? And yeah. and tomorrow I will fly away like the pigeon. Who knows? Right. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I like that. I and again, it's crazy how relatable something written in the eleventh century Persian can be, both mm -hmm. to like us living in the West now and like to er it's a very uh relatable topic for everybody in the world. Yes, it is yeah. it is the don't look up. Of of Persian poetry, if I can make a if I can make a cultural pop culture <laughs> reference, have you seen that movie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Because it was it was made, I think, without the pandemic in mind, right? So oh, you're seeing the social that. media reaction to climate change, uh -huh. and I don't believe the pandemic was what ended up happening is they released it during the pandemic. Wow. And the politicization of the pandemic was very similar to the politicization of climate change. So wow. it actually gained further resonance, which is one of the reasons I would assume it blew up even more on Netflix. Netflix, I think that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, yeah. okay, no, so. I didn't know. Very cool. Anywho, Baba Tahir, Baba <laughs> Leonardo Tahir. DiCaprio, Spirit, <laughs> Spirit Brothers, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, there's another Shabashir poem. And like we said, the next episode, I'll come back and we'll go over. There's a lot of words in here that we can learn. Um, and then we'll learn what the difference between that Hamidanin dialect is and uh, how we can relate it to modern colloquial Persian. So that'll be next time. So thank you, Yara, for another Shabashir. Thank you, Layla, for having me. <laughs> Until next time. Thank you.